Greetings, and welcome to my DOS TwitchBot stream. This is going to be a series of streams. Um, this one's going to be 30 to 45 minutes. It's just going to be setting up DOS. Uh, I'm going to be running DOS, and I'm going to be putting a TwitchBot emulator in it. I'm going to be writing the emulator in 16-bit x86 assembly. No real reason to do it this way. I definitely wouldn't do this way in practice. I'd probably write it in something like Python. But this is very interesting to do. It's something I haven't done. And it's going to be very interesting, I guess. It's also kind of terrible because 16 bit DOS gives you nothing interesting to do. You have your machine and you have some interrupts you can call. And that's about it. And some memory, hopefully. So let's head on over to Firefox. That's a picture of DOS. If you're old enough, you might have used it. Um, more likely, you would have used the DOS box. Here we have it. Let me just bring it up full screen. Um, there's not too much you can do in DOS box by default. The reason I'm going to be using DOS box is because it scales up to the stream easily. Um, I have an actual virtual machine of DOS, but it just, oops, yeah, that's what it's going to look like in a second, but uh, it looks good here, but if you actually scale it up, it blurs really badly in comparison to this. So we're going to be using DOSBox because it's accessible too. So close that out. Oops. And install FreeDOS in DOSBox. I think it's at FreeDOS.org. Yes. We're going to be installing FreeDOS in DOSBox because DOSBox doesn't include any programming tools or extra stuff. It's mainly just used to run games. I'm going to grab the standard CD installer, save that, and wait a little while to download it. While it's happening, let's really talk about what we need to do in the DOS bot. No, I'm not writing that. Okay, so a Twitch bot is something that connects to Twitch. And reads chat. Uh, I'm not good at writing today. Writes chat. So it's fairly simple. Um, usually, again, I said earlier you would do this with Python, and that's the simple reason is because there's like a million libraries to do that. So if we search up Twitch chatbot and we go to DuckDuckGo. Oops, Twitch chatbot GitHub. That's where all the cool kids keep their code. Which you use, see quite a lot of uh, chatbots. Is this a library? Yes, I believe so. So you use requests, the request library to actually connect and then you just pass the text. So you have something like this. Very high level, very good. Use this unless you're really wanting to... I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing this. The pain, probably. Um, but we won't be using this. We will be using 16-bit assembler. Isn't Twitch just RC? Yes! Um, that's a very important point. And, you know what I'm and that's going to be a big problem with DOS here because we don't have OpenSSL in DOS, I don't think. Also, DOSBox doesn't do networking. So, there's uh, two problems we're going to have to fix. So, that's the connects to Twitch part here. So, we don't have SSL. So there's two ways to fix that. 
the first way is to try and get OpenSSL working in DOS. I believe that's possible, but I don't think it happens in 16-bit DOS. I think it's used with a DOS extender, and I really don't want to do that. And also, networking DOSBox is kind of hell, because you have to... Uh, run it through a slip tunnel, since that's the only thing that will give you a packet driver. And that is just horrible, because I have to configure my server to do that. I'm streaming this from a server, not a desktop. Is this going to load? Okay, that's finished. DOSBox, why you? Why is your website so bad? Is its website bad? My internet's not bad, is it? Can't stream if I don't have internet, right? So the first thing we're actually going to do is go to downloads. Oh. Oh. So it just gives us the ISO. So we're going to do that here. We're going to make a DOS folder. This is in standard Unix, so... And we're going to... Yeah, deleting documents and stuff. I mean, the, the correct thing to actually... <laughs> to do is to uh, mess with your user directories and just set them all to... Um, what would you do? that and yeah so you do something like that and then all will be fine in the world but uh, in actual proper shells like the Z shell you'd actually be able to uh, oh, I don't know it set up tap through stuff but that's getting a bit sidetracked so we're gonna mount the free DOS CD I'm gonna make this full screen so it scales properly. Uh, we're going to actually mount the DOS folder. So we're going to mount DOS as C. And I've got it round the wrong way. And we have free DOS 12 ISO and we're going to image mount that. has a whole bunch of complicated arguments. Yes, I think it's D drive, fd12cd.iso, and you add tiso, or it asks you about having to use drive geometry, which isn't very helpful in this case. And then we're going to go to the drive And you'll see that this doesn't have the installer on it. I don't think. Is it in base? It might be. Nope. Oh no, it's in ISO Linux. Then we're going to copy the boot drive to our C drive. And we're going to write copy because we're in DOS. We're going to go to C drive again. And we're going to image mount a drive fdboot dot image type floppy then we're going to go to a drive and run uh, this is a bit of a one of these will actually break DOSBox so I think it's set up yes I think auto exit dot bat ruins things so one thing to note is that FreeDOS does actually check that you're in DOSBox and we'll shim stuff so it'll just set you with a good auto exit.bat I'm going to select base packages only and I'm going to probably remove a few drivers after that I actually have a list somewhere so whoops wrong, wrong screen Have it on my main computer. Yes, CD DOS. Yes, 
So while we're installing that, we're going to quickly look at the horror that we're going to have to use if we want to do any networking in DOSBox. And because of this, I'm slightly torn on whether to just do this and then deal with not having SSL or just... Why is this using SoCat? This needs root or something, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's using IP tables. Natty. Can I get around that? Probably not. But the alternative there is to just connect it to a COM port. And then have... I'll diagram this out. There's my thing. So option one for networking, slip. And you just have your uh, standard slip tunnel on the host. It's like an adapter. And then we have raw IP version four. And this part's DOS. And then you have the actual bot. But the problem with this is, again, it's annoying to set up with slip. And you also have the issue that you're with raw IP version 4, so there's no TLS or SSL, and so you're going to be sending your credentials in the clear. I think most bots already do that. Let me just go to... Well, I was setting up another bot in Python. It, uh, how to code a custom Twitch bot. I'll look at Reddit. Reddit is the gold star of understanding how to do things. Oh, it's a screencast. Who makes screencasts everywhere? Can't even search them. Hugh, Hugh, Hugh. Bot.ruby. Oh, they committed their OAuth keys to the repository. That's, that's a good thing to do. So, does this do TLS? Yeah, this doesn't do TLS, so I guess I don't have to do TLS. All the cool kids aren't doing TLS. Um, and it would be interesting. Alternatively, I could just proxy it. So I could have host slip DOS to proxy. And then I could have my proxy just actually forward it to Twitch with TLS. That's one option. So option two, serial port, host, SoCAD, DOS, and it would just use the serial port. The interesting thing here with this design would be that you'd be able to just connect DOSBox up to a program without needing any kind of firewall uh, network address translation, uh, translation or messing with ARP tables. You could also transparently put TLS in here. The problem with this setup is that something I didn't mention between both of these is that you have the state of IRC2 such as uh, whether you're logged in and when you have to ping. So if the DOS machine resets, then that might actually leave the, uh, the proxy open still connected. And then when it restarts, it's just going to try and log in again. So I guess since I'm doing a DOS stream, I'm just going to go with the usual amount of hell. So I'll just be setting up that. So how are you doing there? It's installing a memory manager. DOSBox already has one of those, which is good. So we'll be removing a few packages. I'm just going to be quickly looking at this. Okay, so that sets up my packet. What stuff here do I have to do on my Linux system? Fconfig? Oh. Most of this is standard. Is that a route? So, what is slow? Hmm. 
This isn't FreeBSD. No, I don't want to... Is that good rent? No. Um, I don't want to use Google because at the bottom of the page just has like the town that I live in. I don't want to get doxxed. Slip. So it is actually slip networking. So I have to check if IP has that. Help. No slip there. Does have tunnels and other stuff. How's the install doing? Yes, DOS install is slow. Not too sure why. Tunnel over by here, is that it? You have slip here? No. Set? Is is that it? I guess I'm not. Good luck. Have a good day. Slip dot Oh I need a kernel driver to it. We just probe that. There we go. Still not helpful. That might have actually shown up as a network interface. Can you even do slip with the new IP utils? Do I mean SIP server here? Let's reboot. Let's focus on this for a bit. My god, DOSBox, what are you doing with that font? Ah. Did you just crash? Okay, I think DOSBox just kills itself when it needs to crash, so let's help it. Halt and catch fire indeed. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to set up our auto exit in DOS box. So uh, I should have actually opened this. Let's close this. Okay, and at the bottom we're going to put something like Um, we also need C. Is that the right thing? Yep, DOS C. I need to actually make the DOS folder there. Oh no, what did I do? Oh no, this is the DOS directory. Alright. 
I need the CD there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to C. Then we're going to go to auto exit. Yeah, that seems about right. So let's try firing up DOSBox now. Okay, so free DOS is loaded. We're actually going to do a little bit of customize out that that beep. We're going to use FD impulse. Ow. Oh. So we're going to turn that off. I don't know if it's actually bad on the stream, so I'll just leave it. You are testing my pet. What is that? Okay. Do we have FD impulse? No, we don't. Okay, so that's something I'll actually need to install. This is a Unix, this is a Unix. Okay, so let's do... image mount D 12 cd dot iso T iso D Let's go to Util This doesn't have tap completion, I think that's what I'm missing FD impulse. Oh. Come on, we can install this. Uh, it's actually in, I think it's util slash FD impulse. That's it. There we go. Packages don't we need in DOSBox? Let me find the list that I have on my computer that I think I just closed. No, I didn't. Uh, okay. Come on. don't need that actually we can leave that there we don't need any of the uh, XMS drivers because DOSBox provides those same to those and the kernel we don't need that because we're not actually booting the kernel I'll leave the uh, keyboard drivers there, remove the LBA cache because that's kind of low level. Probably don't need to remove any of these, but I'm just trying to keep things a little clean because I don't have that much hard drive space. And Nancy, I don't want to actually conflict with anything DOSBox is doing. That might actually be in utils. And Fernandy. Nancy. No Nancy there. Okay. I missed it. There it was. And we would like to install No, not games. We're going to have... Uh, I don't think we need anything from there. Let's just get straight to development. We're going to install FASM. Oof, that speed. It's probably burning through my CPU too. Insight. Uh, I think that's about all the development tools. Yeah. And we're just going to... 
dog, please. And we're just going to get DOS zip, because it's a really weird way to pronounce that. And that's going to be used for exploring around places. Because file managers just don't seem to work for me on the command line. Then we're going to put some stuff into the auto exit after this is done. In the meantime, I'm just going to check out how to actually add the slip interface. Attach. Oof. Attach a network interface to a serial line. Is that actually doing? Okay. Slithatch. Does this actually do it in user space? a lot of time messing with that later off screen. Seems way too complicated to get into. Okay, if I can remember how to do that. I'm gonna edit the auto exit. Head all the way down. Um, we're going to add the mouse driver, which uh, Okay, I guess we don't have to add the mouse driver, that just, that just works. Um, what drivers are we adding? Okay, we're going to add our DOS extender, because otherwise... Fasten isn't going to work. And we need an assembler. And then we're just going to set up the path. Um, C drive, devl, I believe it's a fasm, then we want the debugger, which is insight, and I believe that's it, I'll save, I'll exit, and one annoying thing about this particular setup is that there's some kind of double uh, shell there. So let's try opening up DOSBox again. Let's open up Phasm. Alright, let's open up Insight. Okay, so we have our development tools. And I'm just going to write a quick program using D. What's the command for save as? Okay. Let's save as, what's the load? Okay. So, we're writing a com file. This is just a quick test. I'll explain a little bit later. Um, it's going to have the offset of... that area in memory. It's going to be 16-bit. And, oh, the actual example I have uh, on my own machine is a little bit complicated. So I'm just going to head on over to the examples and find the Hello World one. Yes, so we're going to do move, uh, just move AX to... I believe that's the right one. And we're going to move dx hello string. Then we're going to print it to the screen. We 
actually going to add a string now. Hello string is hello there, which and it ends with that because that's what DOS uses. No null bytes here. It uses a uh, dollar sign for its string delimiters. I don't know why, but this is DOS. And we're going to move Oh, so 4C00H and in 21H, and that should um, print hello world and then exit with success code. So let's actually save that. Um, Sanity.assembly. And then we're going to hit F9 to compile and run it, and Alt F5 to see if it's written something. Yep. I didn't get the new line character. I think that's... I don't actually think DOS has a new line thing. It has 0DH and 0AH, and that's carriage return and new line. So let's try that again. As you can see, the curse is at the bottom, so if we compile again, then we just get hello for Twitch. So, how long has it been? Way too long. It's late at night. I'm going to call it quits now, and I'm going to look more into the networking issue. But next time, hopefully, we'll be able to read from chat, and then write back. That's going to be interesting. I don't have anything to put here. Nothing interesting is here. Alright. Ciao.